Welcome to The Policy Shop, weekly conversations with public policy experts where we'll dive into the most important issues affecting all of us here in Illinois. I'm Hillary Gowans. Let's get started. Happy New Year, Policy Shop listeners. Welcome back to The Policy Shop. I'm Hillary Gowans. School choice is one of the hottest issues up for debate in Illinois, with a legislative push to either make permanent or kill Invest in Kids, a program that grants scholarships to low-income kids who want access to alternative school options. Here to set the stage for what's happening next is Miley Smith, staff attorney and director of labor policy here at the Illinois Policy Institute. Miley, welcome. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Thanks. I know school choice is uh, one of your favorite issues these days. Um, for everyone hit and reset on the new year, let's just uh, set a baseline. What is Invest in Kids and why are we talking about this now? Yeah, Invest in Kids is a tax credit scholarship program that has helped over 37,000 kids attend private school since it started. It is a program that encourages donors to fund scholarships for low-income children so that they can attend the school of their choice. And the way it works is that donors who contribute to a scholarship granting program get an income tax credit equal to 75% of their donation. So this is a win-win program. Donors get to contribute to a scholarship that helps lower-income kids get into the schools that they want, And those kids get to experience the education that they deserve. So why now? Why are we starting the new year with this topic? So lawmakers tend to not like to create things that go on forever. So what happened with this tax credit scholarship program was that it was a pilot program to begin with, and it included a sunset, which means like basically an expiration date. So it was extended for an additional year, but now we are at the like make or break time. This tax credit scholarship program ends at the end of 2023. And what we need to see happen is lawmakers come back. Um, There's lame duck session, which is in the beginning of January and then regular session starts. We need to see lawmakers remove that sunset, remove the expiration so that kids who have gotten into these schools and the thousands that are on the wait lists get to continue going to the schools of their choice. Tell me a little bit more about how um, this is being received, who's debating this, who's on which side of the debate here? It's really interesting. Teachers unions and their allies are pushing to end the school choice program for low-income students. So on the one side, you've got teachers unions and their allies. And on the other side, you have groups supporting these low-income children and their families. And it's a, it's a really interesting um, dynamic where you have teachers and teachers unions, the, the members, Um, pushing against a program that has actually been proven to help lower income kids succeed. And J.B. Pritzker's even signaled his support for this too, right? He has, yeah. And and one of their, their number one claims is that this takes money away from public schools, but it doesn't. Public schools are funded by property taxes and payments from the state and federal government. Invest in Kids is funded through donations with only a fraction of potential revenue lost to income tax credits. So, um, you know, this is something that that helps kids and it also has been seen to help other students who remain in public schools. One study, um, studies have shown that, that these programs help public schools by reducing overcrowding um, and parents are continuing to pay property taxes. So, like I said previously, this really is a win-win. It, it helps public schools, it helps students, it helps lower income families, and it really is something that we need to make permanent in the state of Illinois. The, the arguments against investing kids that I've seen from teachers unions, like the Chicago Teachers Union, for example, um, are really interesting. So there was this tweet a while ago uh, CTU said public funds should be used for public schools and invest in kids should sunset for good. Uh, yeah. Public funds should be used. 
it's a really that so that one's funny um so there are lots of programs that let people spend public funds at private institutions like take Pell Grants or the GI Bill uh we have Head Start here in Illinois so these are programs where you get public funds and then you can invest that money in any institution um, right get a degree or to pay for child care yeah and these aren't public funds right those public funds that property taxes and state and federal government funds, those are still going to public schools. These are private donations. And the only public part that comes in is that those donors are getting a tax credit for giving their money away to help low-income kids. Their arguments are bogus, um, as we've shown here. Um, what it really comes down to is teachers' unions particularly unions like Chicago Teachers Union, want the monopoly over education. They don't want anyone else coming in and doing it better. Um, they don't want anyone else getting any sort of funds. They want to have control over the entire process. And that includes control over parents and their choices and kids and their educational outcomes. They want control over all of it. And so they're going to argue anything that they can, even if they are untruths, to try to scare people away from this program when the bottom line is that this is helping students, you know, at least 37,000 students since it started. And, and we know from groups like Empower Illinois that are providing these, um, they're, they're providing, they're that mechanism to provide the scholarships. There are thousands of kids on the wait list. This is a popular program. Parents want this program, but teachers unions don't because it diminishes their monopoly. Yeah, speaking of the wait list you just referenced, the numbers that we have show 26,000 kids are on the wait list, 26,000. And we know those are kids whose families are trying to get them out of situations like maybe they're in a school where they're experiencing severe bullying mm -hmm. or uh, they have a learning style that just can't be matched or who knows what the reason is. But we've heard from a lot of families that this has just absolutely changed their lives. So Miley, thanks for giving us an update. We'll see what happens uh, and we'll be working on encouraging people to stand up and call out for uh, making this program permanent. So thank you so much. Yes, definitely. Listen and subscribe to The Policy Shop wherever you get your podcasts.